Amanda Clark was a normal California teenager. Just like any other teenager, she would be using her cell phone and texting her friends. What Amanda didn't know is that texting and driving is a dangerous combination. Amanda's texting habits caused her to be involved in a fatal accident in which her car rolled three times. Luckily for her, she made it out with only scrapes and bruises. The incident made such an impact on her that she wrote about it for her senior project. According to the Charlotte Observer, Amanda stated, I believe everything happens for a reason. And the reason for my accident is to let me know that I need to slow down and pay more attention. I know that I need to change the way I've been living. My phone and talking to my friends put me in danger. I realize how easy it is for my life to be over. Amanda got a second chance at life, and she vowed to put her phone away. This did not last long, though, sadly, and like a lot of people, she developed an invincible attitude. One year and one day after her first car accident, Amanda was involved in another one. Unfortunately, this time she didn't make it out alive. Cell phone records showed that she was texting when she lost control of her car. Texting and driving is a huge problem in today's society. Amanda is only one of the thousands of people to lose their life due to texting and driving. So throughout this speech, I'm not only going to discuss the problem of texting and driving, but also some solutions to help prevent it. According to the National Safety Council, 1.6 million crashes occur each year due to cell phone use. Out of those 1.6 million crashes, how many of those do you think were fatal? How many people had to lose their lives over a text message? Evidence showed that those results aren't clear. According to the New York Daily News, driving deaths due to cell phone use is underreported. In fact, Janet Foster, the Safety Council's president and CDO, released a statement saying, we believe that the number of crashes involving cell phone use is much greater than what's actually being reported. Because of this, the severity of the issue is skewed. Texting and driving is a very large problem. In fact, an article released by Auto Safety confirms that texting and driving is now the leading cause of teenage death in America. Think about it. These teenagers are America's next generation. Do you really think they're just going to stop texting and driving as they get older? No. The problem is just going to become larger as time progresses. In addition, NHTSA, which is the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, released a survey. In the survey, they received several areas of distracted driving, one of which was texting and driving. The survey included percentages of participants who admitted to texting and driving. The results were divided into age groups. The results show that 44% of drivers ages 18 through 20 admitted to the activity, and 49% of participants ages 21 to 24. Now, obviously, as the age group grew, the percentages dropped with ages 35 to 44, resulting in 29% and 45 to 64 at 8%. But let's attack a little bit. 49% of the participants ages 21 to 24 admitted to texting and driving. This is scary. That's almost a one to two ratio. Yes, the percentages do decline with the progression of ages, but what happens when the 20 year olds of today's ages are 64? We need to put a stop to this electronic threat. If something is not done now, there will be a future of unnecessary lives taken. Let's not wait till the damage is done and let's do it now. I'm sure you're all aware of AT&T's campaign, It Can Wait. The campaign has done many things to help get the word out about texting and driving. They have done seminars and simulators to express how dangerous texting and driving can be. According to their website, itcanwait.com, they have over 12 million pledges. This is a wonderful achievement. But what if cell phone providers could do more? Verizon has an article on their website which says, Best Apps to Block Texting and Driving. This article lists several apps including Cell Control, Drive Safe, and Mode, like to text. These apps are great, but they're not required. While driving, everyone could be much safer if these companies required these apps to be used. For instance, an app can already be installed on your phone that disconnects all distractions like texting and driving when the car is moving at a certain mile per hour. Obviously, the perfect software is not being created yet. We are already heading in the right direction. The Today Show released a video on their website testing out the texting and driving apps. 
The question was, do these apps stop drivers from texting actually work? The results were positive. While some apps work better, the overall response that the apps implement implemented a safer drive. Now imagine if the perfect texting and driving app was created. If providers require the apps to be used for their service, roads would be much safer. Some may argue against it and say that it's their right to text and drive, and if they want to, then we shouldn't force them. But it comes down to safety. Texting and driving does not only put the driver in danger, but the other drivers around them. A bystander should not have to suffer for someone else's recklessness. Imagine if this was put into work. Drivers cannot be distracted by their cellular devices anymore. Wrecks would decrease. Tragedy would decrease. There would be no more tears shed over a teenage daughter who lost her life over a text message. So I challenge you to leave with this information and carry it on. Do not be a statistic. If someone is distracted by their phone while you're, you're driving with them, speak up. You can even download a texting and driving app yourself. Show the world that roads can be safer. And most importantly, do not text and drive. I've expressed to you the problems of texting and driving and how we can combat it. What are you going to do about it?